Okay. Good morning. It's uh, Saturday, June 15th, um, about 11 in the morning. Beautiful day. Um, several people have asked how I made these. Did I buy them? Where did I get them? Yada, yada, yada. Uh, I figured I'd make a multi-part. I don't know how many. This would probably be the end of how many part series. Um, it's kind of involved and I'm not trying, believe me, I'm not in love with my own voice. Um, so I will try to make it as short and sweet as possible. But there are some pitfalls that I fell into that I would really, really, if somebody else is going to try to do this, that I would really like to see you not make the same mistakes. So I'll try to go over those quickly and move along. Now, number one, having said that, these are not perfect, and that's okay with me. They work. Um, they're relatively inexpensive compared to how much that you would have to pay for a set of Amas or Akas from Hobie, not to mention the regular Hobie itself if you wanted to go that way. Um, what I did is I wanted these because I, well, number one, that's just what I do. I can't leave anything alone. But I have a Predator 13, which by itself and in and of itself has got incredible primary and secondary stability. But I wanted to be able to get all the way out on the nose, all the way out on the edge, cast net, fly fish, everything with absolutely no chance of falling out of this damn thing. Because I do it a lot by myself and I intend to do it at night. There'll be other videos that I'm trying to produce and shove out today. Um, and again, I don't like, I'm not in love with my own voice, so here we go, okay? Number one, you'd probably recognize this. This is the Outback, or the uh, Outriggers off of my kayak. This started life as a stand-up paddleboard, a rigid plastic stand-up paddleboard, okay? Um, Roto-molded, much like that is, and much like that right there, okay? I took it and ran it right down my table saw, okay? Use common sense. You have to really jack your table saw blade up. It's not a very good, it's not a very square item to be running through your table saw. So you probably ought to have help. Yeah, you've been warned, okay? So I ran it through the table saw, ripped it in half. In the process of doing that, I then started modeling the, these without any of this on it out in the driveway and realized that they were too wide, okay, this way, too tall. So I took an additional three inches off the width on each side to get them to the width that they are now, okay? Now, like I said, like this, they're rotomolded, that means that they're hollow on the inside. Uh, first and foremost, when you're laying this thing out, you have to have it set up so that you know exactly where they're gonna meet your kayak, okay? Right there because these have to be hard mounted. All this stuff had to be figured out because I didn't know how I was going to, originally when I did this, I was gonna put a piece of wood right here so that I could just easily screw onto it right there on the top edge and just spread it out. That turned into a freaking nightmare, all right? Um, so I went this route. This is simple PVC T inside here that is glued with some little nipples, which are short pieces of PVC, like this right here, glued inside there with epoxy. The T runs this way and then out this way. Okay, I forget how long this is, probably five or six inches. Um, you can make them longer and you can just cut them off with a hacksaw or whatever, make them out about this long because you don't know how long you need them. Uh, and I glued them in there, epoxy. Okay, all four of them. Now, that's based on modeling where they have to hit the kayak to go across and not impede your paddling. Okay, I wanted them to be far enough forward on the kayak that they would provide buoyancy off the nose, but I also needed some buoyancy on the back because at some point I intend to put a gas motor on the back end of my kayak. So they needed some extra support. Now, when you start doing this, the thing that you need to remember is, and again, I'm not a nautical engineer. I'm, you know, just a guy who likes screwing around with stuff. You're going to have to remember that you are trading weight 
for buoyancy or buoyancy for weight. This thing right here has incredible buoyancy. It's got incredible weight carrying capacity. I wanted more. So that's where this came from. So looking around, talking to people, I discovered that just a hollow deal like that, uh, that I could not seal, you know, for sure, for sure, for sure, uh, was not gonna get me where I needed to go. So I used the expanding foam. I bought a couple of the shake cans just to fill in around here. I think I got them from Home Depot just to fill in around here, just to get this locked in place so the epoxy would dry inside. Because it's glued to the inside of this and the inside of that, this, this piece right here, on all four of them. The problem with that is, is that it comes out, watch any video that you want to watch, and strings like spaghetti. And it leaves a lot of gaps of unfilled urethane foam. So I went on eBay and I bought uh, the two gallon kit. And it's a one to one mix and it's a two pound foam. They make a four pound, six pound, eight pound, 10 pound. The higher the pound, the more rigid and dense it is, but it's not as buoyant. From everything I could find, the most buoyant foam that you could get was a two part, two pound, polyurethane expanding foam. I stood these things up on end after locating where everything had to be, all the hardware and, or plastic wear, PVC wear, and then, started mixing and pouring it inside the cavity from this right here. Now, originally I was gonna use wood, okay? Like I said, that was so heavy and so cumbersome that that became a non-starter immediately, okay? A couple of things that you need to remember. Put, you can see I've got a finished driveway here, or garage, you know, whatever. Put a drop cloth down. This stuff will go everywhere. It'll be like a volcano, like when you're a kid, uh, baking soda and vinegar or whatever, and it just keeps going and going and going. Well, that's what it does. Let it do it. So you gotta have stuff covered and so it'll be able to just ooze out everywhere. Let it mushroom out. I mean, mushroom out like a foot, so it's taller than this, okay? But make sure that it's all that way. And do it to both sides and put a drop cloth down so that everything that comes out can go in the garbage. Do yourself a favor, buy multiple cups to mix in, okay? Yeah, mix it one to one, stir it up, pour it in. Get another, let's set that down, let it dry, foam up dry, get another cup, do the same thing. Just keep pouring it in there and filling it up, okay? Then about the third or fourth cup that you go through, the first one is probably just about cured and you can use a scraper and scrape this foam and it doesn't stick real well to the to the plastic cup and you can pull that out and throw it in the garbage can, okay? And you can reuse that cup, the measuring cup. So, you get that all full, let it cure uh, overnight, and then come out the next morning and you're gonna have to knock some of that crap off that's all over here, that over the overflowed. Um, I used a rasp or a body file, body rasp, or bondo or whatever, I don't know what it was for, but it's like a cheese grater, and grated it down, and then I just used a handsaw and cut it off flush with the hard outer edge of the original paddle board, okay? Now there's some voids in there, way down in there. I mixed up some more, and I poured it in there. Every square inch of this thing now has this expanding foam in there. The number one thing is if you look at a Hobie, Ama, or Aka, or whatever the hell they call them, they're hollow, okay? And they've got a scupper tube that I believe that goes all the way through. So it'll drain, and then the arm sits down inside, okay? I'm going the opposite direction, where this goes inside the arm, and like the Hobie, it's a bungee cord that connects to the arm to hold it up on the arm and the arm down on it. The weight of everything holds the arm down in it on top of it and this keeps it from coming off in waves okay so after that was done it didn't look like it was going to have enough buoyancy um, it was too narrow so i got some one inch pink foam four by eight sheets from home depot and i laid these on it and i traced them and i glued them to the outside and the inside that's 
both outsides of this and gave it another two inches of width, which is what? Another two inches of buoyancy. Um, glued them, and then the next day I came back through and using that rasp, shaped them. And that's how this shape happened, okay? I shaped that with a rasp and formed them with that. Then, I let it dry, and on the ends, I'm gonna shorten this up as, as much as I can right here. Right here, on the point, and on the back side, I got fiberglass mat, okay? Not fiberglass cloth, fiberglass mat. And put it on there and was told to go ahead and use the fiberglass, you know, like in a Bondo resin system. And it's a polystyrene type of uh, resin system. Well, that was all well and good in the areas that I was building up because I wanted this to be as rugged if I backed up into something or I dropped it, this runs into something. I wanted it rugged. So the mat is going to be your most thickest, densest thing that you can put on there. Well, if you look right here, I had some extra mat and I had it going down the side here. And the polyethylene resin ate the pink foam. Okay. So I filled it as much as I could. And I'm not a perfectionist. This is, this is to use. This isn't for a beauty contest or a, a custom kayak deal. And I've never done it before. So again, it's a little chewed where it melted it a little bit. I filled it in some. But uh, in the end, I had limited time because one car garage, one driveway. People race hell when you got your car parked out on the street. So I'm working under a lot of limiting factors. Um... So then I decided, hey, I'd better get myself some resin. So I went to West Marine and I got the 105 epoxy resin system, a one gallon, and the, I think it's a 206 quart hardener. And they come with the pumps. So it's a, you know, one pump of this, one pump of that, pre-measured, easy peasy. All right. Well, in my little town, and for... <laughs> A ways around, there was no fiberglass cloth to be had. That also came into another situation. When you start doing this, everything that you do is going to be visible through the epoxy. So now I have a white outrigger with pink foam and white and that kind of yellowish dirty foam up here. All of that is going to be visible. So what are you going to do? Well, if you paint it beforehand, you gotta make sure that the paint is friendly with the epoxy. Nobody could tell me for sure if it was going to be. So then, um, if you paint it afterwards, that paint starts getting crazy expensive, okay, for boat paint. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't really excited about that either. So, I started reading online and talking to people and doing some research come to find out that the way that they used to make speaker boxes is that they would make take 100% polyester cloth and use epoxy and that's how they used to make speaker boxes and those cars would go boom 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 real bassy I was like well I'll be dipped so I went to Home Depot or to Walmart and this is basically 100% polyester camo cloth okay that's what I wrapped these in okay now, what I had to do is use a spray glue adhesive and cut the pieces and kind of fit them together and make them fit so that it would completely wrap the thing with as little voids as possible, okay? Had I had a shop where I could leave this for days and days on end, I probably would have been a little bit more careful, but I was under a time crunch. I took some time off and I needed to get this done. So bottom line is this is a freaking nightmare order the rollers that they're they look like a paint roller about this long and then there's one like this long and then there's one that looks like a pizza cutter and what you do is after you slop that epoxy on it you let the cloth absorb it 
and then you have to roll it to get it to absorb. Okay? Well, here's the problem. 100% polyester cloth absorbs at a different rate and it stretches and as it stretches it moves so you have to be very delicate on this so what I'm telling you is is that you do it your first run you wet the thing down just enough to stick it and you'll see that the thing isn't you know that the, the epoxy seeps through the cloth and you let it cure for I don't know 30 minutes until it's you know tacky but you can touch it without it coming off on your hands and you use rubber gloves rubber gloves always okay then you put another coat on it okay and once you got another coat on it you let it cure you flip it over you do another coat and you do another coat and you do another coat until it no longer looks like it has absorbed all of the epoxy it's glossy okay now again this is kind of ripply this isn't perfect you can see the seams where the fabric lays there's a lot of things that are imperfect about this that I would change if I was to do it again, which I will never do. Um, I don't think there's enough money to make me do it again um, until you've got it completely smooth. I let it cure overnight, sand it off as much of this runs as I could, and slapped another coat on it. Now again, this is Sunday. I go back to work on a Monday. I had to get this done. Had to get it put away. Okay. Um, because when I'm in a homeowners association, none of this stuff can be visible. You can't have it sitting out in the street. You can't, I, I have no backyard. So uh, there's a time crunch. There's a reason why this all happened the way it happened. Uh, so during this whole process, always, 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 always use a drop cloth. This stuff will get everywhere. Okay. And after I, like I said, I sanded it, put another finished coat on it, and it was good. So, this right here, like I said, is a string that I just tied inside. There's a knot. There's just a knot that's used to hold it in place. And then when I put the, on, the arm on there, there's a screw on the side of the arm that this hooks onto. And it locks it up on the arm well enough that it won't go anywhere when it's in the water. Okay, because the weight of the kayak and the arms are pushing down on this and the water's pushing this up against it. This is just holding it in place. Um, I've been waked by bass boats, deep the offshore boats, jet skis, and I've yet to have these things be an issue uh, with coming off of these little posts here. Um, and again, I know this is a long, long, long video. Um, just wanted to let you know how I did it.